Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today we are going to discuss scleral disorders. The outer coat of the eye is the fibrous layer of the eye and it's formed by the cornea anteriorly and the sclera posteriorly, which are separated from the clear cornea by the limbus. The cornea is forming the anterior one six of the outer coat while the sclera is forming the remaining part. The scleral thickness is variable. It is thickest posteriorly around the optic nerve while the thinnest location is located under the insertion of extraocular muscles. The sclera is the white of the eye. Why the sclera appears white? Number one, it is a vascular. Number two, it contains more water content in comparison to the cornea. Number three, the collagen fibers are arranged in a random order. The sclera has a large opening posteriorly called posterior scleral foramen, which is bridged by loose connective tissue called lamina cryprosa, which is located 3 mm medially and 1 mm above the posterior pole of the globe. Sclera has three layers, which are arranged from outside to inside in this order. Number one, absclera. Number two, sclera proper. Number two, lamina fusca. What are the diseases that can affect the sclera? Number one, inflammation and it could be infective or non-infective number two staphyloma number three tumors inflammation can affect the episclera layer causing episcleritis or the sclera proper causing sclerites episcleritis is a benign self-limiting recurrent inflammation of the episclera and the patient is usually complaining from redness pain and ocular discomfort episcleritis is a one of red eye syndromes and it should be differentiated from the conjunctivitis, keratitis, uveitis, and acute glaucoma. Episcleritis has two types, either simple or nodular, while the scleritis is divided into anterior and posterior, according to the location to the equator of the eye. If it is anterior to the equator, it will be anterior scleritis, and if it is posterior to the equator of the eye, it will be posterior scleritis. The anterior scleritis can be also classified into non-necrotizing and necrotizing inflammation. What are the causes and systemic associations of scleritis? Connective tissue disorders have a great association with scleritis, and the most important one is rheumatoid arthritis. Other causes could be surgically induced scleritis at the site of previous surgery or infection with herpes simplex or zoster. TB or cephalus and other causes of granulomatous inflammation. Episcleritis can be simple or nodular. The simple type will appear flat episclera during slit lamp examination and it is also subclassified into sectorial or diffuse type. The sectorial type will be localized to a small area while the diffuse type will affect the episclera 360 degrees all around the cornea. The other type of episcleritis is the nodular one. There will be episcleral nodule elevated over the underlying sclera with a slit lamp examination. This is anterior scleritis. There will be injection of both layers of blood vessels, the superficial and deep layers. Unlike the episclera, that will be affect only the superficial layer of the episclera. This is the nodular type of anterior scleritis there will be scleral nodule appears elevated during cell tamp examination. This is the necrotizing type of sclerites where there will be scleral melting and the underlying uveal tissue will appear from underneath the thin sclera. In posterior scleritis, the patient will not complain of severe redness like the patient with the anterior scleritis. There will be other complaints. The presentation of posterior sclerites will be defective vision proptosis, restricted eye movement, disc swelling, choroidal folds, or exudative retinal detachment, and mild redness of the eye. So, how can I confirm the diagnosis of posterior scleritis? Number one, with B-scan ultrasound or CT scan. This is an imaging modality for a patient with posterior scleritis. At the right side, we can see a B-scan ultrasound where the scleral wall is markedly thickened as shown by the arrow. On the left side, we can see the CT scan also showing 
posterior scleral thickening with posterior sclerites. Sclerites can affect other parts of the eye, causing complication for the patient, as uveitis, keratitis, cataract, and secondary glaucoma. Systemic investigations for the patients with scleritis should be directed to diagnose the underlying collagen disorder or the underlying infection. So how can we treat a patient with epscleritis or sclerites? Number one, epscleritis and non-necrotizing scleritis will be treated with topical steroid eye drops and systemic non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drops. While necrotizing one and the posterior scleritis will be treated with systemic treatment, not topical steroids. Why not topical steroids? Because topical steroids may cause scleral melting. And if there is a necrotizing type, there will be aggravation of the condition. So all the treatment will be systemic with systemic non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, systemic steroids, and in severe cases, systemic immunosuppressives. If there is scleral melting, there will be surgical intervention with scleral patch graft. The other entity of scleral disorders is staphyloma. What is staphyloma? Staphyloma is an ectasia of the outer coat, either the cornea or the sclera, with incarceration of the underlying uveal tissue. Staphyloma can affect the cornea or the sclera. When it affects the cornea, it's called anterior staphyloma, as seen by the picture. And if it, is, if it is affecting the sclera, it could be intercalary at the lumbar site or ciliary at the ciliary body zone or equatorial at the equator of the eye, which is 14 millimeters behind the lumbus, or posterior type, which is usually affecting the high myo. Treatment is usually directed to treat the underlying cause. And the treatment is usually differs according to the location of staphyloma. If it is anterior, the treatment will be keratoplasty. And if it is sclera thinning, the treatment will be sclera patch graft. In blind painful eyes, cosmetic surgery will be the best choice for the patient with blind painful eyes. Thank you.